This is a film about corruption, the story of a tiny elite secretly enriching themselves by exploiting a country's natural wealth at the expense of its people. For over 30 years, Chief Minister Taib Mahmoud has ruled Sarawak, Malaysia's largest state on the island of Borneo. Today, Sarawak has less than 5% of its rainforests left unscathed by logging or plantations. Global witness show exactly how Sarawak's ruling elite are illegally selling off land for personal gain. Taib is seeking new international investors under the pretext of developing the state. Many fear this money will be siphoned off into private bank accounts controlled by the ruling family. Posing as investors, Global Witness went undercover in Sarawak to find out how business is done and where the money goes. Although we approached the government directly, officials sent us to members of Taib's own family. One area of land offered to Global Witness was owned by a company called Ample Agro. The company belongs to Taib's first cousins, the Abdul Rahman sisters, daughters of Sarawak's previous chief minister. Ample Agro, Ample Agro belongs to my family. Right. But um, um, my sisters, the four elder ones, are in the company. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The land and survey department. Okay. Yeah, they are the one that issues this license. Of course, it's from the CM's directive, but I can speak to the CM very easily. Can you? Yes. And do you think he will agree to it? Yeah. He was the one who gave us that land. Okay. Yeah. He's my cousin. So. His <laughs> family. Yeah. His mother and my father are sisters and brothers, siblings. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's, he's my that's... first cousin. So it's quite easy. Actually, there are eight of us, eight girls in the family. Yeah. So we're splitting all the companies among eight sisters. So that's why I okay. wanted to introduce you to my elder sister. And she's Nolia. Um, Nolia. Nolia. Okay. Yeah. But you know. Is she the. The MP for Tamil No, Marriage. Nora is the MP. Nora, okay. Who's Nolia? Nolia is the eldest. Okay. She's the one that's looking after the constituency for my sister. You're proposing basically Ample Agro, which is your company, okay, sell your company rather than the land, and your company owns the land. Yes, we bought the, I bought the company yeah. as a shelf company for this land. Buying Ample Agro meant we would acquire 5,000 hectares of forest to clear for palm oil. The land is home to many indigenous communities, some living in the area for more than a century. Owners of Ample Agro include the MP for Tanyung Manis, Nora Abdulrahman. Another joint owner is the sister-in-law of Malaysia's Prime Minister, Khadija Abdulrahman. To sort out the deal, the sisters put us in touch with their lawyer, Alvin Chong. Alvin represents the state government and many prominent companies with close links to Taib's family. They are daughters of the former chief minister of Sarawak. You are talking to people of substance, people yeah. who have assets in the hand, okay? Now, asking price. Okay. What are you asking for it? 4,000 per hectare. Per acre, sorry. Oh. Per hectare. <laughs> <laughs> 4,000 per acre. Okay. This sale price would pocket the sisters a 16 million US dollar profit on land given to them by the chief minister in 2010 for a token sum of just $300,000. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Leaked land registry documents suggest that companies linked to Taib's family control nearly 200,000 hectares of land, an area twice the size of Hong Kong, with a market value of half a billion US dollars. While we were negotiating with the Abdul Rahman sisters, we were offered an even larger piece of land totaling 32,000 hectares. The land was owned by a company called Billion Venture, whose majority shareholder is one of Sarawak's powerful tycoons, He Yi Peng. He's nephew, a lawyer named Huang Long Hong, was handling the sale. He explained how Taib would expect to receive a 10% personal payment for agreeing to the sale and providing the necessary permits. This is the one with the proxy who's the old man. Yes. Just your uncle. Yes. How many uncles have you got? Oh. 
for my wife to sign it. <laughs> okay. They have all their big family. But then behind that is the Chief Minister. Yes. Okay. And will he ever surface yeah. as, a, as a... No. Oh, it's like, um, I award you this license. In return, you grateful to me, maybe you say I give you a percentage. Okay, so he'd look for a percentage from the yes, license. Yes. And how would that get paid though to the, um, the, to the nominee? The existing owner will pay him up. So he gets paid it up front? Yes. Okay. Yes. What kind of percentage are we looking for? I think I, 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 think I know. 10%. He is selling for 230 million. Right. Up front, everything. You can check the company, I can provide yeah, to you. Three shareholders. Three? Shareholders. Okay. One is Dr. Yu Yupeng. This Dr. holding majority shares. Right. He is very close to our chief ministers. Right. He has hotel. He has King Hotel. You know King Hotel? Chief Minister Taib has extensive and enduring financial ties with He Yi Peng. Taib himself is a shareholder in Kingwood Hotel. Giving bribes to Taib in exchange for official permits appears to be standard practice. What we saw during our investigation was corroborated by several independent sources, including a high-ranking government official and a logging company executive. The company's based here. Does it? Are you expecting it to be purchased here or funds purchased here? I mean, where, where, where's what's the mechanism? Well, there, there are different ways of doing it. Some yeah. people do it this way. Certain portions are paid here, mm -hmm. and, yeah. other, and the balance of it would be in Singapore, right. you know, outside. Uh, why they do that is to save on the RPGT. Yeah. Because any land-based land company, sorry, real property gains tax. So in order to save on the RPGT, only a certain portion is paid here and the other portion is paid. Okay, so and you, you pay the 10% on the portion paid here. Yes, and the one that's paid outside, okay. you don't get tax. Because you don't declare that. The proposed payment is illegal, punishable by up to three years in prison. Now, have you, have you done, I mean, it's, it's fairly standard doing it through Singapore. Yes. Okay. You will have to do two sets of agreement. One in Singapore? One from here and one to cover in Singapore. It's done here. Both yeah. agreements are done here. Okay. But the other one specifies the full amount where the details are spelled out. Okay. Whilst the ones here is only just for the portion that's here. And, and can you assure me that? we won't fall foul of anything doing it that way? No. It's been done. It's been done? It's been done before. The selling of the shares yeah. could be deemed a disposal right. of the asset. Yes. Therefore, attracting real property gains tax. The, the troubling part to this is yeah. it's going to be a huge opportunity. All right? She said, we need to do the, effectively the tran a, a duplicate transaction, one for here, for submission here, and which then another is, one. Which is a nominal value. A nominal value. And one, the substantial value, is yeah. offshore. This deal shows how money due to the state is stolen and hidden overseas. Malaysia has the world's third largest flow of capital flight, losing the country an estimated 285 billion US dollars between 2001 and 2010. A great deal of this money is rumoured to flow through private bank accounts in Singapore. Everybody so far we've spoken to prefers Singapore. Yes. For, for some very obvious reasons. Now, is there no communication between Singapore and here? That's why we choose Singapore. The, <laughs> the Singapore government is involved. You know? the, the Singapore government has a China wall. And okay. they will not... not Fire a wall. Yeah. <laughs> They will not tell the Singapore Malaysian government nothing. Is that because the Malaysian, Malaysian government then ask them? They ask and they've been turned down. And they get told turned down? Yeah. Sorry, it's not none of your business. They are the new Switzerland. Jurisdiction by choice for people like yeah. us. We operate Singapore accounts too. You can. Both personal and corporate and entities. In addition to tax evasion, Alvin also suggests a method to give foreign investors total control of companies in violation of Malaysian law. Let me highlight something to you first. Okay. Before you and your client are yeah. even going to talk specific terms, yeah. you have to overcome one major hurdle. How are you going to manage the 51%? 51% 
of the shareholding of the shareholding must be held by Malaysian citizens. I can put into place a mechanism to control yeah. the local shareholding. We create a, 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 a lending situation yeah. where you, your foreign party advance money to them, the whatever million, right. Right? and in turn, their shares is charged as security. Okay, that's to, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's interesting. To, to, to your party, so your party holds the original share uh, uh, the original share certificates. Uh, they have a lien over it. They have a charge over it. Uh, How enforceable is that charge? Oh, very enforceable. Now, this she calls person um, effectively kind of nominee, really. It, it has to be. It is in. It is a nominee. Yes. Okay, this nominee is like it has, Okay, all of this. All these instruments yeah. that I'm creating, yeah. it's not going to be done here. It's going to be locked up somewhere in Singapore. <laughs> in Singapore. Yeah. Why? Because the, the local law says that the local shareholders have to declare that they are not holding the shares on trust. You do it in Singapore, that yeah. it won't surface and the nominees is not going to keep a shred of paper. I think you'll your ideas for nominees or proxies or whatever is very attractive. Well, I, yeah, I think it's very um, practical. It's very thought through. Oh, it is. I put it to use many a times. Where would you say a nominee or you know should be should come from in the sort of social political spectrum here or business community. And the lowest rank we can find in a remote area they would not be uh, uh, distracted by clever and uh, clever advices. What I normally do so tell you some trade secrets as such is that we, <laughs> we find some guys who you know their villages or whatever sign up all this stuff to us. We can't even reach them. They wouldn't know how to find a lawyer, wouldn't they? I suppose it solves some of the problems in China. <laughs> it's cheap, it's really cheap. Can you imagine the villager comes to town and you say, I'm giving you 10,000 bucks. My God. Yeah. And he's yeah. going good back to the village, you know, he'll be the, the, the one-eyed man who's king in the land of the blind, you know. Taib's inner circle repeatedly expressed a sense of personal entitlement to Sarawak's land and resources and showed contempt for its indigenous people. What we had was a state land, okay? Even though it's a state land, any land in Malaysia, the minute, you know, the, the, they're pretty naughty people, the minute they hear land, pretty. naughty people, oh, okay, okay? Yeah. they try to make money. So the minute they hear, they have people in land and survey department. Who would tell them, look, you know, this, this land has been given, has been titled to this company to do all palm and whatnot. They'll pong themselves there. Technically, they cannot claim at all, but they could make life difficult if you don't accommodate them. They may, you know, let them... They may harass you, that's, yes. all. that's all. They are no actually way. squatters on the land, because the land doesn't belong to them, it's a government land. So they're squatting. Now that you've been out, you know, like in the exterior hall, you know, they're very, very poor. And when leaders come, they look at leaders like they're kings. And they always expect some handouts and things like that, you know. And, you know, I'm not making any excuses or whatever, but, you know, I mean, if you look at the good that he's done for the state, yeah. it outweighs the, all the things that people have said about him. I know people are talking like he'd be corrupted and all, but I think who, who isn't in this world? when they lead us. <laughs> Until the federal Malaysian authorities are willing to hold corrupt officials to account, the forests and people of Sarawak will continue to foot the bill for one family's pursuit of stolen riches. Over 30 years, anybody can get rich if you have something up there. But if you don't have it, there's nothing you can do.